Okay, we're going to try to design this very simple phone stand. Before we get into maybe more complicated phone stands like this elephant or the cat, or these more complex shapes, let's just start with something simple like a uh, triangle like that. It has a piece cut out and a shelf right here. So the first thing we want to do is to draw a square that kind of defines our boundary 8.8 .8 centimeters by 10.5 centimeters. I think it's only going to let me draw the shape down like this. And then I'm going to type in 10.5 centimeters. Maybe I'll do the 8.8 .8 instead. That way it's the X uh, coordinate down here or the X distance, comma, 10.5 centimeters, so CM. Then if I hit enter, you'll probably notice that the square almost goes away. But we can go down here and say zoom extents like that. And we can zoom in and out. And then what I want to do is really look down here on this green, red axis and maybe have that blue one like coming right at me. In order to do that, I can do something like this and get that blue axis to kind of be pointing away from me like so, or maybe pointing toward me just a little bit. All right, there's the shape on which we're going to draw. And then we're going to make this shape and then extrude it seven centimeters backwards. So let's start with the midpoint up here at the top and then go down here to the corner. And then I guess we can start here and then go down there. And we have our basic shape. I'm gonna hit escape to get out of that tool, get back over here to the eraser tool. And now I have my fundamental shape. I just need to do a cutout right here. So I guess the next thing I can do is begin to try to make that shelf. Maybe um, the thing to do is to start with um, a protractor. This protractor is along the blue axis, so I can uh, lock it into the midpoint along that line. And then I think if I do like this, it will pop into the perpendicular. So when you see when it goes magenta, that purple color, that's a nice uh, angle to do that at. And then we can hit escape and that gives us a reference line right there. Although I guess I forgot to do that. Oh, you had to click here and then right here. There's our line that we're looking for, or at least a construction line. And what we want to do is come along that line and maybe just go, as it says there, 1.3 centimeters, I believe. Looks a little bit long, but I guess we can do that. And let's see, I wonder how we would go about making sure that this is perpendicular on the way out. So hopefully it'll lock in right there. And that gives us another reference line, like a construction line on which we can use that. And I don't think we need to come back uh, as far as, uh, you know, 1.3 centimeters. Uh, I bet we can just do like, uh, I don't know, one centimeter. And there's our shelf. It might even be too long. I'll let you decide on that part. And so you can kind of play around with these things. Let's erase things that we don't need anymore. And that would be the construction lines like that and this piece here. So now we have our fundamental shape that we want. And then we can just play around with uh, trying to put these fillets in here, these uh, curves. So before we add some dimension or thickness to it, let's go here and put some center point arcs in there. I wonder if there's another tool that might be better. Um, I think that might be okay. And um, I think that if you, let's see what happens if you just click right here and then type in a uh, point, uh, let's say like, uh, it looks like it's not letting this type anything. It says control plus or minus to change the number of segments. We don't really need to do that. Um, but if I click the endpoint over here, you'll notice that if it goes magenta like that, that means that both of these two lines are tangent and that's really what we want. Now, I wonder how we could actually control it so that it was, you know, all the same distances here. I guess what we could do is um, hit Control Z a couple of times. And let's say we want that radius of curvature to be one centimeter. So in that case, we start here, go down along this, and then uh, type in one centimeter. So that uh, hopefully it leaves us like a lock point on which to do that. Yeah, that this right here was the end point of that. So, uh, and I could do the same thing here, just come along there. And then if I type in one centimeter, uh, let's see, where's that at down here at the bottom? Maybe it didn't work. I'll, do it, I'll try that again. So going along here, 
it's putting another line down there. You can see it down at the bottom, it says two centimeters. I'm just going to make it one centimeter. And you can see that the end point of that is right here. Let me show you why I'm doing that. Um, you could just freehand it in there, but I'm going to be a little bit more careful with it and try to lock in on that, the end of that one centimeter line. Where was it? Right there. And then if I go back over here, I can get to a place where it turns magenta and then I know I have it. So that that radius of curvature is one centimeter. Now it looks like it might even be two centimeters right there. So you could actually change it to be that. Um, so um, in order to do that, I could hit Control Z a couple of times and then get back to that point. And let's just kind of start over right there. And let's just make a really short line uh, from here over to here, but let's make that two centimeters instead. You see that the end point is right there. So now I grab my circle, start here, and then I try to make it so that I can snap into that position and then click it again. And now it looks a little bit better. It could even be, you know, 1.5 if you want to do that. So um, let me go up here and do that again. I'm going to say 1.5 because I might want to make both of those the same. And then I find the end of that short right there, that short um wire uh the short line that i just put there there's my magenta does that look a little closer sure i'm still going to leave this one kind of broad and that's okay then you can erase this now we have what's called a fillet a curved shape like that and we really want to have the same kind of thing here so i wonder how long we want to make this um i guess we could go to the end point but that might be a little bit far so the that says 1.7, I mean 0.7 rather. So if I go maybe right about there, that's 0.4 centimeters. Enter. And then let's just see what that arc looks like. If it looks like this arc that we have here. So starting there, and I can zoom way in so I can see how my tangent arc is going to fit in there. It locks in, makes it magenta. Click it again to make it, uh, to commit to it. And I'll do the same thing over here. So I start here. I can go either direction. I'm just going to go out that direction, 0.4 centimeters, and then try to find the end of that short segment there, and then wait until it snaps into magenta right there, and then click it one more time. Otherwise, it doesn't lock into position. Then we can erase right here and right there. And so we have the basic uh, shape of our phone stand. And we want to give it some thickness so that we can extrude it out in that direction. To do that, what we're going to do is click the selection tool and select the whole thing until it turns blue like that. And then go down here and um, select, um, I think it's offset. Yeah, there it is. And it says select one end of the piece, like right there. And it says, how far do you want to make that thickness? Now, what I can do here is to say, I really only want it to be one millimeter thick. So don't really don't want this to be using too much plastic when I do that. Now, it's not a closed shape, so I really couldn't extrude it just yet. So I want to zoom way in on this right here and just close off the shape by clicking there and there. And it's still not a closed shape yet because I want to come down to, uh, let's see, where's my pan tool like that, using my scroll wheel to scroll in. Now it's going to be a closed shape and probably turn white at that point. We can use our zoom to extents if you want to and see the whole thing. What we want to do now is probably the last step and that's extrude it out here into um, the third dimension. So that's going to be seven centimeters back. Carefully notice the full of dots there once I hover over it. And there we go, going backwards like that seven centimeters like so now if you want to curve off some of these pieces right here i suppose you could do that i wonder how we might go about doing that um maybe draw on the surface and extrude past it so let's do the same kind of thing we did before if it doesn't work we can just cancel that idea but let's start here go off in that direction and what do we like there um maybe like one just a one centimeter uh, radius of curvature might be good enough for that. And you know, it's optional. We could just leave it just like this and print it. Be a little sharp edges. 
So there's the end of that. I can come over here until I find it right there. Then of course, snap it one more time. Magenta, come on, where's it at? <laughs> there we go, I got that shape there. I suppose what we can do then is, I think you can push this through. So you select that thing right there and you just push it down. And it says the offset limit reached. So I think you just wanna do, um, probably just one millimeter um, like that. And that way it pushed all the way through it. Put a curvature over there. You can even play around with these shapes up here using your orbit tool. This is something we can 3D print. All right, so feel free to make that very simple shape. And then coming back over here, if you wanna go a little bit more advanced, you can get into these other shapes. All right, hope this helps get you started.